next week on Urban Rush, fashion designer Jason Matlow. Hello everyone and welcome back to Urban Rush. It's always a pleasure to see our next guest, even if he's critiquing my hair. Well, Michael, it's Devo hair. That's the it's only Devo thing. Hair. Devo hair. John Devo hair. John Perry, everyone. Diva. And that's why we love him. Yeah, exactly. So and I love it, you guys. Is it just too long on the sides? Is that what you're saying? Oh, God. Let's just not even go there. I mean, it could take <laughs> weeks of consultation. Look at who's nice. talking. I mean, I all know. you do is... I've got my hair so short as You have funny. the number five. You drag it across your head a couple times, <laughs> and you're good to I go. I myself. Exactly. This is exactly. just a beautiful body of work you oh, put together. Oh, thank you. Uh, seeing it in the studio looks so cool. I'm usually seeing it in my uh, cryptic uh, studio space. It's seeing it in here is like, wow. Tell us it's about the inspiration for Fallen Angel. It, it's interesting because when you're an artist, you're always working beyond what you already know. So you're sitting there thinking, you know, will this read? Will people understand it kind of thing? And sometimes people don't get what you're doing because what they know you for and what you're painting are usually about two years apart. Right. So there's some sort of devastating moments you're like, oh, you know, what am I doing? And is this working? And then, you know, for example, I'll go see a show by somebody like Ross Penhall or Tico Kerr. And I'm like, oh, God, I should go be a barista. But this isn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but any time that I've been in that sort of situation where I've sort of been a bit of angst, I've always got this message, and I call them these angels that come to me and go, John, keep painting, keep painting, keep painting. And that's kind of the message behind this work, is like, just follow those instincts. Angels don't come around very often, and they don't stick around very long when they do. So listen to the message, and it's always been to keep painting. Okay, so. let's talk about a couple of pieces. Let's start with my favorite right here. This is yours, Fiona. Yeah. I love <laughs> Yes, Fiona will be taking the new baby home. I think so. Tell well, us about this guy. It's, the neat thing about it is that I kind of let the reins out on this collection as well because I just went, you know, I can put that there because I feel like it and I can put nine different colors mm -hmm. in this shade because I want to and, and uh, what made it up. And I just went, you know, turquoise, turquoise, turquoise and let's just keep painting with that and what goes with that and it just not even letting the work flow through me is more, you know, yeah, than yeah. sitting there wondering yeah. what am I doing? And do you get I... in the fever pitch? I mean, where three days later you go, whoa, where yeah. did that all go? <laughs> I'm easily distracted. I'm usually multitasking in my studio. I'm making chocolate chip cookies. I'm, you know, doing a number of things. I'm playing on the computer and I'm painting at the same time. And I kind of get them mixed up and it's like, oh, there's paint in my cookie. Yeah, there's um, a little cookie so, yeah. over there. <laughs> um, but that's, it, it definitely hits you. This work has been uh, a pleasure to paint. I don't think of my painting as work necessarily because I enjoy it so much. Much, yeah. but it comes very easily and but you have to have that little bit I don't think I've ever met an artist regardless of, of whether you know what medium they're working in that didn't have a little bit of pain going through the process, a little bit of torture, you know, at least a little bit of that. There's, there's always that vocabulary that we're trying to, to have. I'm trying to communicate something. I'm still trying to figure out that equation of what I'm trying to communicate as an artist, but it's definitely a voice that's coming through me. But you're always wondering, will this read, will this thing? Well, yeah. But I do have some mentors that I meet with in my career, and I'm like, okay, what do you think of this work? And they're like, wow. So that kind of fuels it as well. So you have that's to have cool. some, and I mentor other artists as well yeah. as I'm coming along so and I'm so flattered that somebody asked me to look at their work and I'm like me you know, what, what, I, what do I know you brutally what do I know people? you have um, to be honest I would think I, I, I what I try and do is I make sure to tell an artist where their strengths are and to move towards those strengths rather than what they think they want yeah. the work to look and like. do you like that in the feedback that people give you as well or do you just yeah. say whatever yeah. you want to say <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's interesting I mean you you get confident about what you're doing I mean I graduated from art school in 1988 so I've been at this for a few years so you're really excited I, about the flock Seagulls to it. <laughs> oh, my hair is coming back like you wouldn't believe. Longer at the front, oh, shorter at the I, I got an email one day asking me, do I like dark chocolate? Do I like dark white chocolate? Do I like this or like that? And I'm like, and then one of the questions was, if your hair could be any color, what would it be? And I'm like, much to my mother's dismay, my hair's already been into every color. Yeah. I went to art school in the 80s. I had, I, had, I had the flock of seagulls fin out oh, to yes, about here. Did. I had the, the, the uh, lace shirt. Uh, I, I was, were, I was a flock of seagulls. Okay, let's we'll talk be in the about a row. couple of uh, other pieces. Pieces, the one yeah. with the yellow background here. Tell us about that one. It was that was the first piece in the whole collection, and that was what was really cool. The one on the far right. Mm -hmm. That was the very first piece in the whole collection. That's when I just went, let's go with it and let's see where it goes. Does and that the first was, piece set you up? 
It does. It does. Uh, first three pieces kind of get you going, and then all of a sudden it's like, bang, I've got a series. And then you start setting dates for shows and an exhibition and that kind of thing. Do you ever go to your own exhibits and kind of listen to what people are saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the point I'm of exhibits. Sneaking exhibit. up behind people all the time. Like, what are they saying about <laughs> me? Just but I was, I was sitting in a restaurant the other day, and the people next to me were talking about me, but they didn't realize who I was. And like, oh, yeah, John Ferry. Oh, yeah, we're da da da. We're great friends. And Did I'm they sitting say there. nice things? Oh, they were pretty nice. We're but, I, you know, my friends. ears are like this. They're great friends, and they didn't know who you were. <laughs> and they didn't know who I was. But they they always, you know, claim that they know me, and I'm sitting there going, oh, John, these guys. well, I know, uh, I mean, in all your work, I think there's just such a vibrancy mm -hmm. uh, to what comes across, and it's not just color, there's something below that, and there's something else. I that hope that's what, what reads in my work. I'm, I'm so excited about being an artist, and my enthusiasm goes through my work, and I'm excited about what I'm painting. I don't paint doom and gloom, I'm, I'm painting a hap coming from a very happy place, but I hope that my enthusiasm comes through in my work, yes. and you have to resolve yourself to the fact that 90% of the population won't like your work. The other 5% can't afford it. And that little tiny, you know, speck of the of the world that likes your work and can afford it and wants it and loves it and yeah. everything else, uh, you know, so that's kind of where it comes well, from. Well, and I'm a big believer, too, in, in when you have art in your home or in your space, the uh, emotion that it was made with will come across in it. You know what I mean? Like, it will be part of the vibe that's of That's that the perfect painting. connection when somebody sees what you're saying and they get it and that kind of thing. Like, but everybody comes from a different place. You mm -hmm. can't expect everyone. But those, those, those rare connections where people just go, that's my piece, and I love it. Tell us about uh, the other one here that's uh, got the blue background. It's it's sort of coming into you know almost like you know a, a grandmother type of, <laughs> of of you know the the big flowers, the big roses kind of thing. But you know I just I just like I said it was just letting the rains out yeah. and just doing whatever I wanted and putting the colors where I wanted and uh, and just having it read that it's fun and it's beautiful. And there's nothing wrong with being surrounded by flowers. <laughs> I, I I don't think so either. But it, it's interesting also because I don't really know the names of half the flowers that I'm painting. I will see something and go, oh, that's really cool, you know, whatever that is, and I'll just apply that to my it's work. It's unusual because most people nerd out and study and... Oh, God, no. Um, <laughs> I, I, flowers deliver the color that I'm looking for to communicate in my work. How's that for the artsy fartsiest ever, thing you've heard all day? I love the artsy farts. <laughs> do you ever have them in front of you? I mean, when you're painting, do you ever have any reference or... No. Like a vase? I no. didn't think so. Yeah. No, I, I actually saw a stamp the other day, and it was a a hat that a little girl was wearing and the, there were sort of streamers coming out of the hat and it was just like this really, well I made that a flower. <laughs> Just because I can. You well, can and, do it. Every, oh, wait, we have to talk about the exhibit because oh, yeah. we book. are out of time because yep. there, are, uh, there are a few things going on now. The exhibit is at Main Space, April 17th through the 30th, and maybe you can explain the tie-in of this wonderful little book. I did a 26-page hardbound uh, book for the collection as well. It's the entire collection. There's an artist statement in there as well, and it's all about the color. So, um, you know, people sort of say, oh, I can't afford your work. I'm like, well, you can get a book. You can uh, get a book where you have the little six-inch uh, renditions I have little six-inch well. canvases. I have paintings that are small. I have paintings that are large. I mean, the whole gambit is colored. Something covered, so. for everybody, John. Absolutely. It's always so always nice to see you. I Thank you, you so much. Thank you love so you too. Much. Even though you hate his hair, I still love him. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're talking Mariners baseball with Dave Rashard from Rogers Sportsnet. They have so many games in HD. And we're going to talk about the prospects for the Mariners this year as well. Be right back.